as a friendly reminder. Hey, it's Ja. Welcome back to this channel or welcome to this channel if you're new. Thank you so much for watching this video or for listening to this podcast. If you're listening on Spotify, I have a podcast named What Happened by Hey, It's Jo. I will link it below. Check the description box. So for today's video, this is part 2 of the heartbreaking case of Zara Claire Baker. So in part 1, we talked about Zara, how she was able to win the battle of cancer, how strong she was, her family life, and what happened to her. So here, in part 2, let's talk about Elisa's Zara's stepmother version of the story. Ang sabi ni Elisa, Zara had been feeling unwell in early September and she continued to get more sick over the next several weeks. Until on September 24th, pumasok si Elisa sa kwarto ni Zara and found Zara not breathing. Bakit hindi niya na-report? Bakit hindi niya dinala sa ospital si Zara? During this time, sa isang normal na magulang, stepmother man yan or biological mom, alam niya yung medical history ni Zara. So normal, nang una mong gagawin is dalhin sa ospital yung anak mo. And according sa medical records ni Zara, she had only been to the doctor about two or three times since nag-move sila sa US. So sabi ni Elisa nung nakita daw niya na Zara was not breathing, she started CPR, continuing for about 30 minutes before giving up. And at this point, instead of calling any other person would do if they found a child not breathing, she calls Adam to come home instead of calling a hospital or the emergency or 911. And when Adam gets home, she told him what happened. And ang response ni Adam was apparently to tell her to calm down and go take her medication and that Adam would take care of everything. Elisa said na they decided with they, I mean Adam and Elisa, decided it would be best to not report Zara's death because Adam at this point was still in the U.S. illegally. And then what happened next, sabi ni Elisa, she did not witness or have any involvement. Ang sabi ni Elisa, allegedly, nakita niya si Adam na kinuha yung katawan ni Zara and dinala sa banyo. Sinara ni Adam yung pinto and binuksan ni Adam yung tubig. So, the water was running on full blast. At this point, ang sabi ni Elisa, akala niya, Adam had likely become overcome with grief or maybe he was performing some kind of an aboriginal ritual quote unquote ritual since Adam was from Australia and she didn't know anything about his homeland which is incredibly offensive maybe kasi ano bang iniisip ni Elisa na ginagawa ng mga tao sa Australia I mean kahit pa hindi mo alam kung ano yung culture or kung saan nang galing yung asawa mo I mean Zara was gone bakit dadalhin ni Adam yung anak niya sa loob ng banyo, isarado yung pinto at buksan yung tubig. ba? What do you think he was doing? And then Elisa said that Adam and her disposed of Zara's remains the following day. And at this point, of course, tinanong ng mga pulis si Elisa kung nasaan, kung saan nila tinapon, saan nila dinala yung remains ni Zara. And 
sabi ni Elisa, maghanap daw doon sa Dudley Road. I'm not really sure kung ganun yun i-pronounce, but yeah, let's just say it's Dudley Road in Caldwell County. So, doon naghanap yung mga investigador. And there, they found a horrifying scene scattered across that area was some of the dismembered remains of Zara Baker. Over the next several weeks and months, her remains would be found across three counties ng North Carolina. So dahil nga nakascattered yung remains ni Zara, it's possible na bago pa makarating yung mga investigador doon, yung wildlife had got some of Zara's remains or at least have moved them far away. And dahil nga dun sa condition ng remains na nakita nila and the fact na initially yung skull ni Zara was not found so Zara's death was ruled as undetermined violent homicide and the only thing na they could determine from doon sa mga remains ni Zara that Zara nga had been dismembered with two separate cutting tools. Nakakita din yung mga investigador ng 18 pinhole-sized specks of blood on a wall sa kwarto ni Zara above her bed head, which would later bring them to conclude na Zara had likely passed away of blunt force trauma while laying in her bed. Somehow, the police back up Elisa's version of events that Adam was part of all of it. So, nag-decide yung mga police na i-check yung cell phone tower records to see exactly kung nasaan si Elisa at si Adam noong September 25, the day that apparently Elisa and Adam disposed of Zara's remains. So, yung phone ni Elisa was found to be in the area where the remains were discovered. Pero yung phone ni Adam was 20 miles or 32 kilometers away at his workplace. And on top of that, phone records showed that Elisa had been trying to call Adam that day. So, kung sinasabi ni Elisa ay magkasama sila ni Adam na nagdispose ng remains, Paano nangyari na ang cellphone ni Adam ay 20 miles away doon sa area na pinagtapunan ng remains? At this point, may isip po na ano kayang iniisip ni Adam doon sa confession ng kanyang quote-unquote asawa? Well, first off, bago pa niya marinig yung confession ni Elisa, he became aware of a few other things involving Elisa. Sinabi ng mga pulis kay Adam na Elisa was still illegally married to a man named Aaron. Si Aaron na akala ni Adam ay kapatid ni Elisa. And nalaman din ni Adam na he was Elisa's seventh husband. After ng mga revelations na yun, Adam felt slightly less inclined to side with his wife, understandably. Kasi noong una, hindi naman sa pinagtatanggol, pero parang naniniwala siya. Siyempre, kumakampi siya sa asawa niya, asawa niya yun. Pero after nung mga nireveal sa kanya ng mga pulis, nadismaya siya. Rightfully so, of course, nalaman din ni Adam na Elisa was claiming na Adam dismembered his own daughter which he denied any involvement whatsoever. Ang sabi ni Adam na Elisa put the idea sa utak niya na yung ransom note ay konektado sa pagkawala ni Zara. And sinabi din ni Elisa sa kanya not to say anything sa mga police 
given na nasa US si Adam working illegally. Pero ang sabi ni Adam, he truly believed that Sarah had been alive and well until the day na he reported Zara missing. In an interview, tinanong si Adam kung sa tingin ba niya na involved si Elisa sa pagkawala ng anak niya, sa pagkawala ni Zara. Ang sabi ni Adam, quote, I'm not sure. I'd like to think no because that's my wife. Until they've completed their investigation. Of course, hindi pinaniwalaan ng mga polis yung version ni Elisa na she found Sarah passed away doon sa kanyang kwarto. And hindi rin, nila, hindi rin naniwala yung mga polis nung sinabi ni Elisa na Adam was involved doon sa nangyari. And in February 2011, Elisa was charged with second-degree murder only avoiding a first-degree murder charge because she cooperated. Dahil nakipag-cooperate si Elisa sa mga pulis, imbes na first degree, naging second degree yung charge sa kanya. And basically, yung conclusion ng mga pulis na kung hindi sinabi ni Elisa sa kanila kung nasan si Zara, they would have never found her. Sa tingin ng mga pulis, ang nangyari was, noong September 24, habang natutulog si Zara, Elisa hit her over the head with an unknown object until she passed away. And it was believed that Elisa dismembered Zara's remains in their bathtub. And traces of bleach were later found in the bathtub to back up this theory. And yung reason na naiisat ng mga investigador kung bakit dinis member ni Elisa yung remains ni Zara was because para maging mas madali sa kanya na matransport si Zara and mahide yung cause of Zara's demise. The police think that Elisa loaded the remains into one of their vehicles and No September 25 nga, Elisa drove around and disposed of the remains on her own. Tragically, the day that Zara was thought to be killed on September 24 was just six weeks after the Department of Social Services closed their case regarding Zara's welfare, determining that she had not been in any danger. Elisa was also charged with bigamy or being married to more than one person at a time. Police believe that Adam was not involved or at least na-prove nila or wala silang nakitang evidence to suggest na Adam was involved in what happened to Zara. However, Adam was not totally clear dun sa nangyari. In April of 2011, Adam was charged with identity theft and obtaining property under false pretenses. Adam was given an electronic monitoring device to wear and he was told not to leave North Carolina until his legal situation was sorted. In September of 2011, Elisa Baker pleaded guilty to the murder of her stepdaughter plus other lesser crimes. Even though, until now, she still insists that she did not kill or dismember Zara. Ang nakakaloka pa, nagpa-interview pa itong si Elisa sa 60 Minutes para siyang talk show or para siyang, para siyang TV patrol ng Australia. 
and yung interview na yon was infuriating. As in, nakakaasar siya. Sa true lang. If you want to watch the interview, ililink ko yung video ng 60 Minutes Australia. Pero I suggest huwag nyo nang panoorin kung ayaw nyong mainis or maasar kasi hindi talaga siya nakakatuwa. Elisa was eventually sentenced to 15 to 18 years in prison. 15 to 18 years only. And this was incredibly a light sentence. And dahil dito, naging outraged yung mga tao both sa North Carolina and sa Australia. Dahil ang sabi nila, this was ridiculously light. This was a light sentence. As if killing someone wasn't bad enough. As if killing a child isn't bad enough. She killed a child that was more vulnerable and Zara was sick. Walang kalaban-laban yung bata. May prosthetic pa siya. May hearing disability pa siya. And yung publiko was sickened. Parang kumbaga nakakasuka. Parang ganun. In prison, Elisa was kept in isolation pretty much 24 hours a day because we all know na karamihan ng mga criminals kahit criminal din sila hate nila yung mga criminal na child killers ba sabi nga ang magnanakaw ay galit sa kapwa niya magnanakaw pero yung mga criminals kasi doon sa sa jail parang Ang sinasabi nila, criminal sila, pero hindi nila kayang manakit ng bata at babae. Parang ganun. This case blew my mind. Although marami naman talaga nakakalungkot na cases tulad nito. Parang katulad nung kay Gabriel Zamora. In 2012, Zara's skull was found. So, majority ng remains ni Zara was found at this point. And nung 2013, Elisa pleaded guilty to some of her illegal substance charges. Ang ginawa kasi na Elisa, she sell prescription painkillers from her home that Adam says he had no knowledge of. Grabe yung pagiging ignorante ni Adam, nakakaloka ha. And doon sa mga charges na yon, she was sentenced to a further 10 years with no possibility of parole. So this sentence will start after her murder sentence ends. So after nung 15 to 18 years ni Elisa, may dagdag pa siyang 10 years. Pero kung tutuusin, may iksi pa rin yun doon sa murder case niya. So Adam Baker eventually returned to Australia with none of his charges being serious enough to for him to serve in jail. And pag uwi niya sa Australia, dala-dala niya yung remains ni Zara and he continues to maintain that he had nothing to do with Zara's death and he was completely innocent daw. But we can't deny na Adam was absolutely guilty of being an absent father. Na kung tutuusin, kahit pa sabihin natin na he was working for long hours, ano ba naman yung kausapin niya? Um, ba sabi nga, kung gusto may paraan, kung ayaw may dahilan. And alam din naman niya na May sakit si Zara. ba? Parang kumbaga, kapag ang bata may nararamdaman, mas kailangan niyan yung attention, mas kailangan ng care, mas kailangan ng pagmahal. Kumbaga. And isa pang kasalanan niya, na guilty siya, ay yung pagiging ignorante niya. I don't know. Nasa 30s na siya. I mean, gaano baka manipulator itong si Elisa para mapaniwala siya dun sa mga kalokohan niya, ba? I mean, hindi pa ako nanay, pero if ever na magkaanak ako, ang magiging number one priority ko, 
ay yung anak ko. O okay, sige, sabihin na natin, parehong number one, yung wife niya at yung anak niya. Pero, ba diba, bilang ama, paano mo nakakayang ineglect yung anak mo? And paano mo nakaya na hindi siya makita for 15 days? E alam mo naman na may naramdaman siya sa katawan, kumbaga cancer survivor siya, amputee, may hearing disability. Ano ba naman yung i-check niya, ba diba, for 5 to 10 minutes? Kausapin niya, are you okay? May nararamdaman ka ba? Are you good? Parang ganun. And guilty din siya for not paying attention to Zara and for Zara's life. Pero sa sitwasyon na to, hindi lang naman si Adam yung dapat sisihin. Madaming tao yung dapat sana ay may ginawa for this child. Yung mga tao na, na nagsususpecha that Zara was being abused and yet hindi sapat yung mga ginawa nila. The entire system failed this child in every way. And itong nangyari kay Zara was entirely avoidable. Kung sana itong mga adults ay may ginawa and naging mas responsible enough for this child. Yes, may isip na yung mga 9 or 10 years old pero bata pa rin sila. And remember, Zara was a survivor, a cancer survivor. Kumbaga may times na bumalik yung cancer niya and as I've said, naging sickly siya ulit nung early September. I mean may chance yung tatay niya, si Adam, na kasi siya yun nang doon eh. Siya yung kasama sa bahay. Siya yung dapat nag-aalaga sa anak niya, ba? Diba? Although naintindihan ko na dahil asawa naman niya si Elisa, siguro akala niya, Elisa was taking good care of his daughter. But unfortunately, she was not. And nagtiwala si Adam kay Elisa na inaalagaan nga ni Elisa yung anak niya. Pero hindi pa rin talaga eh. May kasalanan pa rin talaga si Adam. Noong 2011, Zara's law was introduced to North Carolina, which makes the dismemberment and disposal of human remains in order to conceal a crime a class 1 felony, allowing prosecutors to seek harsher penalties. Kumbaga, mas mahabang sintensya or mas mabigat na parusa sa mga ganitong crimes. Kasi nung time na nangyari to kay Zara, North Carolina didn't have a harsh punishment in place for offenders. Katulad ng ginawa ni Elisa kay Zara. Zara also has a memorial doon sa Caldwell County and a playground named after her in Hickory. Zara Baker would have been 21 years old kung nabubuhay pa siya ngayon. Sobrang hirap yung mga ganitong case, especially if it's involving a child. But I want to thank everyone for listening to Zara's story. And I hope na may matutunan tayong lahat dito sa story na to. I'm telling these kind of stories for educational purposes para meron tayong matutunan. And I believe naman, hindi ko na kailang isa-isahin yung mga dapat natutunan natin sa story na to. But, thank you so much you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. I hope to see you on my next video. Please stay safe, stay home, and be a little kinder. God bless you all.